Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to make an environment with a new add-on called Nysarga. If you don't know what Nysarga is, it is a huge library of nature assets. It works directly with Blender so that you can just select what you want and bring it directly in. What makes this add-on so special is the sheer amount of things you get with it. It's one of the largest nature asset libraries, if not the largest of all. There are three different versions of the add-on with varying amounts of content, but all of them have a ton of things included, and the quality is just amazing. I'll have the link to the add-on in the description if you would like to go look at it and purchase it for yourself. And if you need any help with the installation process, I'll also have the tutorial video for that in the description. So starting off, I looked for some reference photos online so that I could get a feel for what exactly I wanted to make. I found some pictures of forests with a lot of fog and decided to try to replicate that look. I had a picture on my head of what I wanted and I started looking for trees that matched my vision. There are a ton of trees so I was looking for a little while but I came across this northern red oak. It caught my eye because of the trunk, I liked how rough it was. Since I kind of already had an idea of how I wanted the scene laid out, I went ahead and positioned the camera so I could place everything accordingly. I wanted a tree with a very long trunk, and I found this, however you say that. I placed it over to the right and liked it so much that I duplicated it and put one towards the back. It's a very random time to do this, but I went ahead and positioned the sun just so I could get kind of a better visual of what everything's going to look like in the end. I just like having a light source to begin with. I found this leaning tree and I really liked it because I figured it could like work as a foreground element and kind of block the scene in, kind of frame everything, if that makes any sense. But I just kept scaling and rotating it and nothing seemed right, it just seemed to take up way too much space. But luckily there was another version of it where the branches didn't stick out as far and I decided to use that instead. There's not a whole lot to say about this part right here just because I'm just placing a few trees around, but the big tree right there is really important because it's still framing in the scene and later I'm going to have the focal point in that big empty area right there. I really like this tree because of the huge trunk and how it's all like kind of wobbly and everything. It reminded me of the reference photos and I also just really like those trees. Never saw them before but I think they're really cool. I brought in a skinny tree because I figured I'd need a little more variation in my trees and just like everything else so far, I'm using it to frame everything in, and I'm creating an archway with the limbs. I got another giant tree, which is really cool, because this one's way cooler than the first one, so that's cool. I can't help but think about Planet of the Apes when I see these trees. I put another one on the right side in place of the two little trees that I had. And then I put this kind of pine tree in the foreground, but I didn't really like it there, so I moved it to the back, where it finally found its home. After taking the skinny tree out of the back, I then proceeded to add another one for some reason. Then I turned the sun up, because... because... why not? Now for the focal point. I used this photo scan that I took of my sister. I sat her on this log, because she's forever sitting for the rest of her life. Again, I know it's very, very random, but I decided to do the mist pass right now for some reason. The mist pass is pretty important for this shot because I don't really have a background, so I'm pretty much relying on fog and mist to cover up my lack of effort. I put this fern in front of the camera to get that nice depth of field blur on it, and then also put this bush here because it, again, made that little circle around the focal point very important. I found this really big bush and put it right beside the character so that I had something kind of hanging over her. It was feeling a little empty on the right so I added in a fir tree to kind of give it a little more detail over there. I duplicated that tree and put it in the back to fill in the giant gap that was there. Now it was time for grass. I wanted to get the grass scaled properly so it didn't look weird, but later on I didn't stay true to that and I just scaled it however I wanted. One of the features of Nysarga is that it has this button that allows you to randomize the rotation and scale of objects that you select. So I used that quite a bit on the grass so it wasn't so uniform. I duplicated the foreground bush and put it in the back just so I could kind of cover up that the ground was ending in the back. 
Fast forward a little bit and I had all the grass done and I just needed to get a little more shrubbery and flowers and stuff like that in there. I really like yellow flowers, I'm not sure why, but I just, just like them. I put this big fern in the background again to cover up that there's just a void of nothing in the background. And to finish it all off, I found a mossy rock and put it in the background just as a small little thing. You can't really see it in the final, but it's there. And we know it's there. And now, after all of that, here is the final result. I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. I mean, the trees look great, everything looks great, and it was actually really easy. I could just easily bring things in as I needed, so I highly recommend this. Um, I'm definitely going to be using it on future projects because I suck at nature, and this is really helpful. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you learned something from this or got something from it.